If you're a complete beginner with GarageBand and music on iPhone, I think this is the video for you. Stick around till the end. The first thing we do is click on the plus at the top right. Now you can choose which instrument you want to start with. We choose drums. To play the drums, click on them. If we click on the triangle at the top left, you will have a choice of either going back to your songs to finish the project or changing drums by clicking on the already selected drums. Here you see a list of all the different drums in GarageBand, but you probably do not have this many at the moment because you have to download it from GarageBand's audio library for free. You can choose between, for example, electric and acoustic by clicking here and selecting drum here. I choose Arcade Fancy. Let's talk about the different buttons. This is the play button that lets you hear what you have recorded throughout the mix and click on this stop icon to stop or just pause with clicking the same button again. This is the restart button that takes you back to the beginning of the song. This is the record button that comes down and lets you play by pressing the drum pad and make your own simple beats. Now I will record. So I first press the record button and then I press different sounds. It will count to four and then I can play. It doesn't matter much if you play a little wrong, because there is automatic quantization on already in the drum settings. Now that I have recorded my first loop, I can add more by pressing the record button again and recording hi-hats, cymbals and other effects. So I record the rest during two other recordings, but you can also do more. When I am happy with a pattern, I click here to switch between track view and instrument view. When you click there, you will see the notes you have added. By double clicking on the green track, a control panel will appear. You can cut by dragging these scissors forwards and backwards, and pull down when you want to cut. You can zoom in, and you can drag the length between the cuts and mark with cuts what you want to adjust. If we double click again with two selected clips, we can press join to merge the clips into one. Double click and press edit to change a specific tone or pattern you play. I'll fix on small details by dragging notes to the right plates. If it gets too fussy, you can zoom in in the same way as you did in the track view. When you are happy, Press done. If you click here, you can change things like volume, treble, bass, echo and reverb. Drag left to lower and right to raise. On the FX button, you can apply different effects by pressing the recording button and dragging on them how you want your song to be. Here's the undo button that will take you back if you make a mistake. If you click here, you'll get to loops. Loops are pre-recorded sections you can use in your song. Filter by selecting a specific instrument, genre, or description. Scroll between different loops and press them to listen. When you want to use a specific loop, hold it down and drag it where you want it, and release. Now we can try to make some more advanced settings by double clicking on the piano part and selecting settings. We double the speed of the piano. This can be done with most loops. Then we can go down and select an octave up by clicking on the plus. Now we get a brighter sound from the piano.
double click again and press loop. This will repeat the track throughout the song. If we click on the piano symbol, this menu will appear. We choose duplicate. Now we have an exact same piano as the loop. Note that it's only possible to play the piano from the loop if the loop shows green in the track view, which means that you can edit the tones. If we instead double click on the piano icon, we will return to the instrument view. Here you can play the piano as in reality. Click here to change octave, up or down. Drag the sustain button to the right to get more reverb to the piano. Press the button in the middle to toggle between glissando, scroll or pitch. Press the tone symbol to change the scale of the piano, for example minor blues. If you click here, you will see this menu. Turn this on to get autoplay sound on one tone at a time, but this is not that useful. But what is useful though is the chords that you click here to get to. Here you press different chords that you can choose from. At the top of the chord is the lightest and the bottom is the darkest. If you click here, you will see that autoplay is turned off. Turn it on by dragging to any number. Each number plays the instrument differently. I choose 3 as an example. You can also reduce or increase the noise and cutoff. If you press back to the melody section, you will see more sound settings. Record chords by letting the piano play itself on different chords at a time and play the melody how you want. When I'm done, I click here to get to the track view. If you drag from the far left to the center, you can adjust the volume and mute instrument, or listen to only one. I scroll back and I double click on this section. Click on settings and go to quantization. Here I instead press one of the upper ones, because I played relatively unevenly. For even more uneven cases, you press the top ones. This you have to do with all the instruments you play, except for drums, but you can do it anyway. Now we can click on the plus again. Now we can choose guitar. Here you can play different strings from different chords. If you press the chord name, the entire chord is played. Press here to turn on autoplay just like on the piano. Press here to get to the melody section. Here it's also like playing guitar, but you can only play one note at a time. If we press scale, we can change scale here too. For example, major. Now we can record some guitar. Now we switch to the track view. Double click on the section and choose edit. Now we can correct both timing and pitch. If you hold a note, it zooms in to correct small mistakes. We press done. We double click again and select settings, quantization, and change until it sounds good. We also increase the volume a little bit. and adjust the echo and reverb.
Click on the plus. Now we can select bass. The bass works just like the guitar. Now we can play some bass. Settings, quantization. I choose a high because bass does not require many notes. I raise the compressor, which works like the volume. Now we can add strings. To play these, you can click on them or drag up and down quickly. We take the highest quantization. We raise the bass and adjust the echo and reverb. If you press master effects here, you can change the sound of the echo throughout the song. I choose triplet echo. Now you can add an effect through loops. Search effect among loops and choose one that fits. I choose this one. Hold, drag and drop. To get more filling after the effect, I divide the drum where the effect begins. I cut and choose to edit the other clip. I add new tones by unlocking the edit mode here. I put out how I want the drums to be played now. I switch back to locked. I select all the hi-hats and double click. I choose copy and I paste it right between all hi-hats. Then I have doubled my hi-hats. I fix some small details and click done. This is the result of my song, but uh, feel free to send in how yours sound through the email in the description. But now, here's my result. By the way, if you want to export it, you hold it down and then click share and then choose one of these. So yeah, that is pretty much the basics of GarageBand and I hope you learned something new from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I see you guys again very shortly. Goodbye!